Okay, today's experiment is based on Dr. Stiffler's SEC Exciter, and so what I'm going to be showing is magnetic tuning. And this is the basic circuit I'll be using. Now, there's various ways of tuning this circuit. You can use variable inductors or variable capacitors or a combination of the two. Now, I'm going to use a, a fixed inductor here and a, a small neodymium magnet. And uh, this capacitor here, that's a 0.82 nanofarad marked 821. L1 is a 22 microhenry choke. L3 is a hand wound uh, choke. It's just basically wound onto an empty solder tube tube, uh, 10 centimeters long by 12 millimeters in diameter. MPSA06 uh, transistor and a one meg resistor. So that's the basic circuit I'll be using. And uh, it's quite interesting, this uh, magnet. It seems to create what I'm dubbing a secondary oscillation. And uh, it produces some quite interesting effects, which I'll show you in the video. So that's the basic circuit. And this is it running. Uh, that's the small L3 coil. It's a lot smaller than the, uh, the last one I used in the last video. And uh, we've got uh, an AV plug detector just lying on the worktop uh, 12 inches away. And that's lit from the field from this thing here. And the tuning inductor is there on the prototyping board. None of this other stuff's involved here. It's just there. And it's got the uh, small cube magnet on there. I hope it shows up on the camera. So basically, uh, that's transmitting energy uh, to that AV plug. And I'm using 12 volts. And I'll just show you a fluoro lighting. So that's working nicely. You can wiggle that about. So there's a decent field off it. And is what I'll show you now uh, is what I'm dubbing the uh, secondary oscillation effect. So I'll just set that up for you. In fact, I'll just wiggle that magnet about so you can see the tuning. So I'm just adjusting it now so you can see the LED moving in and out. So that's how I tune it. It's just another way of tuning it. But uh, this secondary oscillation effect is quite interesting, which I'll set up for you now. OK, here's an interesting configuration. I've just repositioned the magnet on the inductor and uh, the LED AV plug detector is strobing now. So I'll just drop down to eye level so we can see the uh, LED. And you can see it flashing away there. And what's interesting here is as I approach the L3 coil, the strobing frequency changes, so I'll just move my hand towards it. You see it coming into picture. You can see the strobing frequency changes. Oops. And the closer I get, the steadier it will, the faster the frequency it's on constantly now move my hand away that's interesting okay the L2 is a 10 microhenry choke now and uh, we've still got the magnet on top see the magnet is there and I'll just show you the field on this. Now, as I move the neon up, it's completely and utterly uh, lit for the full length. But I'm about uh, two inches away from the coil. Now, if I move it closer to the coil, it goes, well, it fades. So it's right up against the coil now, and it's nowhere near as bright as it was before. It gets bright near the bottom there. But very, very uh, much reduced brightness towards the top. But as I move it away, it brightens right up. And then I can do it the full length of the coil. Now, if I do that with a fluorescent tube, so that's 1.6 milliamps now I'll move the tube away and it brightens up 
current draw increases. Okay, I've adjusted the magnet again on the 10 microhenry choke. So uh, the AV plug is 10 inches away and it's lit and the circuit's drawing 4 milliamps and it's using 7.5 volts. And uh, I'm just wondering if this double oscillation uh, this magnet seems to be causing is increasing the, the wireless range because 10 inches is a fair way for a 4 milliamp draw. So I'll do some more tests on that. Okay, this last part of the video has nothing to do with the magnetic tune I just showed, but while I had the circuit set up, I thought I'd mention it. And it's to do with the lack of the base emitter protection diode, which is needed to protect the transistor's HFE. Now, the reason why I've left that out is it needs to be considered as part of your circuit, or, well, the tuning of your circuit. If that's not tuned correctly, uh, your uh, output is d diminished. And I'll show you what I mean now. So it's what I've done is I've swapped the fixed inductor over to a, a SEC 15-3 coil with ferrite rod for tuning and I've tuned for maximum output so the LED is lit and I've got a uh, protection diode here it's an LED and that's not connected but I'll get them both in shot and I'll connect the uh, protection diode so the LED went out but the protection diode is lit now you're probably thinking well if that's nice and bright the circuit must be throwing loads of RF out well it's clearly not the case. So to actually uh, get this to work better, you can either put more diodes in series with this, or you can use a variable res resistor in series. Now I've got a 100K resistor here in series with this uh, diode. And is what I'll do is I'll connect that. And you can see the LEDs come back on and the protection diode's lit. So the, the uh, transistor has been protected and yet we've still got full output. So that's just something I thought I'd mention. Thanks for watching.